Ludwig van Beethoven shaped entire musical genres, pushing boundaries and even breaking them. He was a pioneer and not just when it came to music. What would be missing today in jazz or film scores if it hadn't been for Beethoven's many innovations? Would the concert business as we know it even exist? And how did Beethoven change the role of the artist? What would a world without Beethoven look like? That's what I wanted to find out. My journey begins with the most famous four notes in classical music and their enormous influence on popular music. It all started with Beethoven and Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry might not agree, but rock and roll started here. Ludwig van Beethoven needed just four notes to create an entire musical cosmos and one of the most famous compositions of all time. Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, first performed in 1808, is a global hit. Only four notes and they still challenge musicians today. Relentlessly going on with the bass guitar. Ian Anderson from the band Jethro Tull also needed just four notes to write the 1971 hit single Locomotive Breath. Rudolf Schenker, the rhythm guitarist for the German band Scorpions, raised the stakes to five notes. This guitar riff in Rock You Like a Hurricane is one of the most popular in recent musical history. Surpassed only by the original. In his fifth symphony, Beethoven constantly varies the four notes through all the orchestral parts and keys. The simplicity of the idea amazed his contemporaries. 150 years later, the concept was rediscovered in England by rock musicians. The idea caught on in the United States as well, and heavy metal was full of catchy riffs. Did Beethoven discover the perfect formula for a hit song back in 1808? We're in Hanover at the Expo Park, and I'm standing right in front of the very famous Peppermint Studios, where inside the Scorpions are rehearsing. With over 110 million records sold, the Scorpions are one of the most successful bands of their generation. Rudolf Schenke wrote the band's best-known guitar riffs. Do you know what I found? This quote from the internet. Rudolf Schenke is the Beethoven of Hanover. That's very flattering, but there are worlds between us. You can't take that too seriously, but that's a nice thing. I was so happy when I read that. But if it's the topic. It has to be played aggressively. Now I would put a beautiful, suspenseful note under it. Crescendo. Yeah, like that, just some suspense. So many rock bands have stolen Beethoven. Of course, the subconscious always plays a role. For example, Americans have been influenced by the blues. The Europeans, the English, and of course, we Germans especially, have been influenced by classical music because it's in our genes. 
That's why Metallica are such big Scorpions fans. They said, hold on, the Scorpions sound completely different. We've got to check this out. They noticed, wait a minute, there are other influences. And they noticed the influence of classical music, because the blues shape you differently. We here can't play the blues at all. We're shaped by classical music in such a way that we focus on melody and a certain rhythm. I believe that the riffs are perceived differently over the decades and centuries. In the past, life was less hectic. Nowadays, there's an abundance of everything. So you have to find something that has signaling effect. This is extremely important. And then you have to keep that feeling alive, so that it's not only there for a short time and dies off. And when you're writing music, you have to arouse curiosity in order to keep the listener with you. The result? Short, melodic riffs which inspire audiences around the world. Ian Anderson's trademark. He has been influenced by both English folk music and the greats of classical music. I was comparing the Beethoven's Fifth, the opening statement, as being typical of the, the motif in music, not just classical music, rock music, jazz, pop, whatever, a motif, a, an idea that is that is repeated very often as a repeating motif, which then tends to be shortened to riff. The idea of a riff in jazz or rock is usually a, re a repeating motif. Now, of course, Beethoven did, did use that idea and develops that idea of the da-da-da-dum. And I would guess there's a lot happened with Beethoven. He wasn't sitting there mulling over these same few notes. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he probably just went, he probably spilled his coffee and <laughs> accidentally went, bum, 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 bum. oh, that sounds good, which is the way most of us work. A good rock riff, I suppose, is going to be simple, direct. It's going to repeat because it is truly a riff, not just a, a motif, an opening gambit, if you like, a statement. It's usually a repeating phrase. So, the, the, you know, the great rock riffs, I suppose, that come to mind, or come to my mind, perhaps one of the greatest ever, would have been Richie Blackmore's wonderful riff in a piece called uh, Smoke on the Water. You know, I love the one, um, the ZZ Top one, that is this wonderful shuffle thing with a, a, a lot of backbeat stuff that is um, called Lagrange. It goes... Um, <laughs> which repeats all the way through. So that's a great rock riff, very simple one to play. Just essentially, it's, it's really three notes. And in many ways, you know, it's that same thing with the wonderful Whole lot of Love, which uh, is in the, this key, in fact. Maybe Beethoven, you see, and if he was born again today, I don't really see him riding around in the stately family Mercedes you know, with two screaming kids in the back. I, I think of Beethoven more like an off-road motorcycle guy, you know, getting a bit down and dirty in the mud. That, that's my idea of, of Beethoven. It's incredible how much Beethoven has shaped our music world. Whether in jazz, film scores or rock music, his innovations and ideas are everywhere. Mm -hmm. 